everybody, how are you doing today? Doreen here, and today we are joined by Jer Bear, the creator and founder and writer of the uh, Blog Awakens blog. Um, yeah. What's the website? TheStarTrader.net. StarTrader.net. That mind, guys. Look it up. There's going to be a little thing right here, probably, maybe over here. I don't exactly know where, but it's going to be on the <laughs> screen, and you'll get that URL. Um, so, tell us a little bit about your website all right well it's a basic affiliate website where I handpick pro Star Wars products from Amazon link them on there and um, you know it just creates a great product list for people to look through um, and it grows as time goes on when I see new products coming out new movies new books I review those books I put those reviews on there and hopefully people will buy stuff and support the Star Wars community and I get a little commission off of it, so it yeah. works well too. It's not a bad deal. Yes, not a bad deal. I love, I, I love writing about this stuff. Might as yeah. well get pennies for doing it. And then you're currently doing a project with Mandalorians, correct? Well, <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm trying to get every Monday. Um, I really want to kind of interview different kinds of yeah. people in the Star Wars community, and so far it's been Mandalorians, yeah. and it's kind of been by not by mistake, just by coincidence because I first got in and f with some Mandalorian in the UK and then yeah. they recommended other Mandalorians and I they only know other Mandalorians <laughs> so, sounds very Mandalorian yeah so uh, that's who I've been interviewing so far but I have contacted somebody who's really good with prop making okay so that's my next go-to so hopefully I get more of a the actual cosplay construction. Yeah. Mandalorians are really good when it comes to cosplay construction, though, because oh, the armor yeah. itself just takes a ton of work. Um, and I think that's kind of fitting, because right now, Mandalorians are very big in the Star Wars universe. Um, you know, with everything going on in Rebels, and yeah. especially with everything going on in Rebels. Mainly yeah. with everything going on in Rebels. <laughs> uh, they're really hammering in. Which is interesting, because... Um, I don't remember hearing a lot about Mandalorians until the Old Republic games. Right. Um, because all you had before that was the novels. Um, and then Clone Wars came out and they started really pushing the Mandalorians and, the, and now Rebels are pushing the Mandalorians. I didn't really there. know a lot about them um, growing up. Yeah. You know, I read the the trilogy novels that they kind of released in all yeah. there. And I never really got into Mandalorians myself. They were just kind of like outside of my radar yeah. until like recently they were like, bucket heads and like <laughs> kits and like it's amazing what the people like how dedicated they are to yeah. that niche in the star wars universe it's awesome so while we're talking about mandalorians and you know their their place in the star wars mythos and you know the original trilogies and all those you know novels that came along with them uh, brings up the question how do you feel about the new canon versus the eu which is a question everybody gets of course everybody gets this question no matter who you are but uh, how do you feel about the new canon? I'm gonna get really nerdy. <laughs> Go for it. This is, this, is a nerdy, this is a nerdy blog. This is a nerdy uh, channel. So, so the past month interviewing everybody that I have, I've gotten some really interesting perspectives on the old lore versus the new lore, yeah. and I've kind of been able to been able to form my own kind of idea of it. Uh, the original writer who wrote the kind of the Mandalorian mm -hmm. novels. They had a real they got inspiration from like samurais and Vikings and everything. And that's where the, kind of like Mandalorian culture comes from. It was very warrior honor code and everything. But it was also very uh brutal. Yeah. <laughs> and the way that translated into like the the Knights of the Old Republic games was mm -hmm. awesome. It was great. They addressed the Mandalorian wars and everything that happened. Yeah, you got that dichotomy of the Mandalorians versus the Jedi. That was huge. Yeah. That's like Russia versus U.S. or whatever, some other dichotomy. Yeah. Um, and when Disney has decided to axe everything <laughs> and kind of rehash everything as they see fit, I think they kind of watered down Mandalorian culture a little bit. But at I, the same time, yeah. the new episodes have kind of rekindled it for mm -hmm. me. See, I I think when they started addressing Mandalorians in Clone Wars, they did water it down a little bit because now you have a peaceful Mandalore. Yeah. Um, which, in a way, kind of made sense to me because you have the Mandalorians, who are this warrior race, uh, and after the Mandalorian Wars, you know, they, they were really put down. 
Right. I mean, they were kind of like Germany in, in, the, in the 40s. You know, they lost and then they had everything <laughs> stripped for them. And then, I mean, Germany became one of the most peaceful countries in the world now. Right. And one of the most liberal countries in the world. And then so did the Mandalorians. <laughs> and that's the way I've always kind of seen it. Um, but you did lose that traditional Mandalorians. And you kept that in Death Watch, but they were a little too extreme. Right. Um, whereas now that the whole thing with Darth Maul and Death Watch happened, Mandalorians are, and um, Satine died. Um, you know, and after, <laughs> yeah, poor Obi, um, <laughs> now you have more of that traditional Mandalorian now because they're kind of off that peaceful, uh, right. mythos. Um, the thing I don't like about the new canon, as far as Mandalorians are going, um, and it's kind of what you had just touched on with the division between the Mandalorians and the Jedi that has always been there, they never really mixed well, was pre Vizsla, not pre Vizsla, um, Tar Vizsla. Oh yeah, right, Tar Vizsla, the... The Mandalorian Jedi, yeah. which makes no sense to me, it makes no sense to me. It, <laughs> I could see something like that happening now with like Sabine, if she was younger, right? Becoming, you know, kind of, you know, force sensitive and things like that. If she was, uh, because you have that Galactic Empire and the Mandalorians are so far from what they used to be. But we're talking Mandalorians in the prime. We're talking Mandalorians, you know, just at the at the end of the Mandalorian War, and right. for one of them to be a Jedi, I mean, that's kind of traitorous, I right? Think. And it's interesting how they kind of show all the Mandalorians almost worshiping that, yeah, that sort of ideal of oneness with the Jedi. It, yeah, that kind of kind of did itself to me anymore. And I'm like, well, it <laughs> looks like Disney's kind of uh, just yeah. throwing a character out there to kind yeah. of maybe make some merchandise. They're trying to up the dark saber. Right, and, but but the latest episode. Mm -hmm really kind of kicked it back because um, Sabine's mom, Ursa Ren, yeah. she's... Everybody's probably watching right now. Spoilers, I guess. Sabine <laughs> has left her crew to yeah. save Mandalore. Yeah. And what Ursa says at that time is like, Mandalore's gotta go through chaos before it can find itself yeah. again. I think the reason why they put the Jedi in there is because they have no unit anymore. And maybe by having somebody with a dark saber, I was able to come back again yeah. to what they used to be. So, see for me, the issue with everyone worshiping the dark saber and Tarvizla is it completely overwrites Mandalore. Yeah. <laughs> and Mandalore being the pinnacle of Mandalorian society, and right. Mandalore being the leader, and whoever has Mandalore's helm, you know, takes right. on the mantle of Mandalore and leads the Mandalorians. <laughs> and now you don't have that because you have Mandalore and Tarvizla, and unless they somehow connect them into like. A feud like that you have the worshippers, uh, the followers of of Vizsla and the worshippers of Mandalore. That'd be really cool because even in the that, yeah. further reaches of the old Republic mythos, you still have Mandalore come back, right? Uh, or have, a new Mandalore. You even have people like Darth Revan, who is very much, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, he was his own thing. He wasn't a Jedi, but yeah. it's Anakin 1.0. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, okay, so. If we were going from the entire Star Wars mythos, who would you say uh, maybe your favorite or most, most iconic character would be? The entire Star Wars mythos? Ooh. Can you say the question again? <laughs> <laughs> so, if we're going through the entire Star Wars mythos, who would be either your favorite or most iconic, like the one that resonated with you the most? Oh, man. Um... With the way my life is going right now, probably not a known, well, a Galen Erso from uh, Rogue One, Jin's dad. Yeah. I think he's like the catalyst of all this. Excuse the novel pun there. <laughs> but without him, there would be no progression and the ability for the rebellion to kind of push to the brink and come together. Yeah. Like, he was the focal point in a way that nobody saw. And the struggles that he went through in terms of his family, what he want, what he needed to do to protect his family and himself, mm -hmm. that kind of makes me think, well, dang, I'm getting older. I'm settling down. I have to, Not that I'm going to make decisions yeah. that are going to determine the fate of the galaxy or anything. But he but, probably didn't think he was either. He just knew he had to do something to right. and I think rectify he's, his... Yeah, and that's the thing. He was doing things just to help his family, but in, in the process, he's yeah. the 
biggest, one of the biggest influences in the entire Star Wars storyline. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah. So, Galliner. So that's my choice. All right. I'm sick. All right. So a uh, little more lighthearted question. Uh, if we were to take every female in the Star Wars universe, who would you kiss? Who would you marry? Who would you kill? Oh man. <laughs> Rachel, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hera. Hera's... I don't discriminate I like between species. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I do. I have a soft spot for Twi'leks, too, so... Uh, and, okay. and then the second one was, who would I... Kill. Who would I kill? Or, sorry, Mary. Who would you marry? Kiss, would Mary, I, kill. Would I marry? Leia's too tough for me. Yeah, I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't want to deal with her on the daily basis. <laughs> There's a reason Han leaves. <laughs> oh man, who would I marry? It, I, I, it would be between uh, Jin. I think I'm gonna go with Jin. With Jin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As uh, I'm sticking with it, I'm sticking with it. You've seen her smile, right? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> who would you kill? <clears throat> <laughs> uh, out of the women in the Star Wars universe? Out of the women in the Star Wars. I can't say everyone because then everyone would pick Gar Gar. <laughs> oh man, that's a tough one. There's not a lot of women in the galaxy. There really isn't. <laughs> I mean, and all the women are super like strong and independent. That's true. Man, that's a tough one. Who would I kill? Oh, what's her name? That bounty hunter with the long fingers? Uh, Ventress? No. No. No, I... Oh, Ventress is cool. I would kill Oh, uh, you're talking about the one that hangs around with Boba? Yeah. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. She's not important enough to know her name. But... <laughs> just kill her off. Yeah, just kill her off. <laughs> All right. Um, see, mine's difficult because my kiss and my marry are interchangeable. Okay. The reason I'm with my marry is because I feel like... Uh, so my kiss is Ahsoka. Okay. Yeah. Um, my Mary is Padme. I love Anakin. I'm sorry. <laughs> my Mary is Padme because I mean, like Natalie Portman. Oh my God. Um, yeah. And then That's I would one. kill. Uh, see, I hate her so much. I always forget her name. Ventures. No. Mothra. What's her first name? Mon. Mon Mothra. Mon Mothma? I call her Mon Mothra. <laughs> I call her Mon like Mothra because she looks like Mothra. Um, I just hate her. Yeah? I don't know. She, she seems so uppity. Like, oh, look at me. I re lead the Rebellion Alli Rebel Alliance, but I wasn't even here until recently. <laughs> like, let me. I've been here for three years. Let me tell you what to do. No. She's, she's, she politics. She's too politicky. Yeah. She's very You know, like, I just, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with her. No, she's very clever. She, she single-handedly... Save the heroes of the Empire's End novel with a sour fruit. Okay, I mean, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's clever, but that doesn't like, I don't know. No, I, I, I don't like her. <laughs> All right, and to wrap it up, so what are some future plans you have for your blog and your site? So the site that it is right now is kind of like a rough draft. I kind of want it to become more of a network. Mm -hmm more than a, an affiliate website at some point. Yeah, I'll maybe leave something for it to shop, but I really want it to be like a hub for people to look at Star Wars news, look at reviews, something to bring the community together from all over the world. Okay, perfect. Um, and that is uh, StarTrader.net for the commercial one, right? Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> I don't know how to describe these things. Um, and then it is the blog awakens is the blog um you do reviews on movies comics all that right yeah all right perfect um well thank you guys all for joining us uh thank you jerry for joining us as well thanks for um, having me yeah absolutely and then uh like always i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i'll catch you all in my next video later